Hey you guys, what is up? It's Dunbar Snack Bar here with another episode of Let's Talk Baseball. And I feel so alone right now. I mean, I don't have anybody here with me talking about a particular team. I don't have LTP Fear with me talking about baseball right now. It's just you and me hanging out, talking baseball. Now, this is what I originally intended for, so I got to get used to this. But at the same time, it's just so different. Last three episodes, I've had someone with me. Anyway, you guys know that for Let's Talk Baseball, I want this to be an informative show. I want it to be something that you feel you know, more enriched after you have listened to this episode and feel like you li- know a little bit more about baseball or at least feel comforted knowing that you're not alone in your love for baseball. But this episode is going to be a little bit more opinionated because I feel like I have to get something off of my chest. i got to get it out there for everybody to be able to hear. Because you guys know that I am excited for the coming of baseball. And as excitement for baseball grows, so does the resentment of baseball from all the naysayers. I mean, we hear things like the game of baseball is outdated, that it is slow, that it is boring and uninteresting to watch that baseball has passed its prime and that we should get with the times and move on to a sport that is more exciting and more in with the times. Now, in some respect, I'll agree with these naysayers. I think that in some degrees that they are right. When you look at basketball, more points are scored in a game than some baseball teams get in an entire month. An average game of football, don't get me wrong, that game is really going to get your heart racing far more than any average game of baseball. But therein lies the beauty of baseball, I think. I mean, how foolish is it to think that action and excitement are really everything when it comes to sports? Sometimes in our lives, it is the slow moments that are the best moments. The moments that bring us solace and joy, the ability to reflect on the past. Those, I think, will be remembered far longer than any moments that were there just to get our heart racing. Now, Typically, these slower moments in our lives anyway are the most profound. Now, we live in a world where we are asked to do more and more, and our lives become more fast-paced every day. Because of that, I see baseball being more and more relevant and valued. For the past 150 years, baseball has served as a distraction for our country and for the everyday person, and I think that this is something that's going to continue. On the battlefields of the Civil War, there were also baseball fields. During World War I and World War II, people turned to baseball to divert their attention from the images of dead soldiers in the battlefields of Europe and the Pacific. You know, even more recently, even after 9-11, New York turned to baseball for hope. Ten days after all that happened on September 11th, New York celebrated after Mike Piazza hit a home run over the fence in left field that has been called one of the most emotional moments in sports in modern times. That's all of sports. So to say that baseball is irrelevant, to say that baseball has been irrelevant for some time is to ignore the excitement and cheers from all the New Yorkers in the stands of Shea Stadium who, for a brief moment, were relishing in that which was good, rather than experiencing the sorrow that they had felt from what happened 10 days before. So what baseball is a slow sport? I'll admit it, but what other sport allows you to engage in the game by giving you time to discuss what's just happened? One of the things I love about baseball is that it encourages its fans to analyze debate and to relive the game as it happens many sports don't allow you to do that because of the pace of the game for example with basketball after one team makes a basket then the other team has 24 seconds to run another play you don't really have that much time to discuss what's just happened before something else happens that you need to talk about when you go to a baseball game on a beautiful summer day you don't go just to watch the game you go to experience the game You have time to talk with the person that you are going with and you have time to eat your hot dog and to drink your soda and never miss a thing that takes place on the field. You have time. That's what's awesome. You have time along with everybody else to be part of the tradition of baseball. In the seventh inning you can stand, stretch and sing the same song that has been sung by so many people in so many games over so many years. Baseball is the game that my dad taught me. He watched it and played it. His father watched it and played it too, and his father did the same thing. Baseball ties us to the past and to a time that seems better than the time that we live in now. I think one of the most beautiful things about baseball, though, is that the game itself has gone unchanged for so long. Baseball has been its weakest when it tries to reinvent itself, to become a quote-quote newer sport, to kind of accommodate what everybody else thinks is best. But so what if the game hasn't adopted some of the things that other sports has? Can anyone really say, and I mean really say, 
that when football instituted the coaches challenge that it became a better sport football was awesome before and football is still awesome even after they changed it baseball hasn't made small changes like that or even big changes because it doesn't need to make those changes no sport has stood the test of time like baseball and i don't think that any other sport will ever stand the test of time like baseball has you don't have to like baseball. I'm just asking that you respect it. Because you naysayers out there say that baseball and the players who play the game are not as athletic. Sure, some players don't run as fast as some other players in some other sports. Some guys are short. Some guys look like twigs. And you know what? I'll even go as far as to say that baseball players aren't asked to exert themselves as much as other players are in other sports. So how do you define athleticism, though? Because I don't know about you, but I think that someone being able to throw a ball 100 miles an hour, now that's faster than some cars can ever dream of hoping to go. And I think for a lot of us, we're thinking about the first car we had in high school or just some junk car out there. I think that's pretty athletic. I mean, I also think it's pretty freaking athletic too that someone can take that same ball traveling at almost 100 miles an hour and hit it with a piece of wood that is at most two and three quarters of an inch wide over 400 feet. It looks easy, and that is baseball's greatest deception. It is not easy to play. Think about it. If baseball was so easy to play, and if you had to not have any athletic ability to play the game, how come you aren't paying or getting paid millions of dollars a year to play the game? I love baseball because it's relatable to the world and the human experience. Like I just said a little bit ago, there are so many different types of players. There are fat and thin, tall and short, young and old. The demographics of baseball and the baseball players are almost as diverse as we are. Their success and what they do is based off of what they have done, what they have earned, and the work that they put into everything. Not just because of what's been given to them. Because we understand baseball players will fail. It's something that's just accepted as part of the game. Think about it. If a quarterback completes only 30% of his passes, chances are he's going to be sitting on the bench. If a basketball player completes 30% of their shots, they're going to be sitting on the bench. But if a baseball player gets a hit 30% of the time that they come up to the plate, they're doing a pretty great job. And think about it, 30%. 30% you're failing a test. 30% are odds you never want to go with. But in baseball, that's good. Because in baseball, as in life, failure happens. And when it does, it's okay. There is a knowledge that there is going to be a next time, and that the next time there is a chance, though not great, but there is a chance that things will be better. The thing that makes baseball awesome is where the magic is found, and that is the improbability of certain things happening. You know, going back again, Game 6 of this year's World Series was absolutely phenomenal. Now, the game could have ended with one strike, and it seemed like against all odds, the Cardinals came back, and they did it not once but twice now unless you were a fan of the texas rangers you celebrated that because something like that rarely happens once and then it became even more improbable when they did it again and then it became even more improbable because it happened during the world series and the season was about ready to end baseball is a sport that values personal performance as well as your performance with the team baseball is the only game that ends when you fail or you succeed, not when time runs out. The sport has had its controversies and its issues, and it has come out okay. And we can see a lot in ourselves in this sport, and it brings an appreciation of the game like no other sport can give us. Like in life as in baseball, we celebrate and value those moments that are unexpected. We have hope that things will get better when it's tough, and that there is always more to come. Now, to you naysayers of baseball, once again, this game is different. I don't ask that you love it. I don't ask that you like it. All I'm asking, again, is that you respect it. I am a fan of football. I am a fan of basketball, soccer, and so many other sports. But ultimately, baseball is my sport. I ask that you understand and recognize the differences between our sports and see the strengths in them. There are things that are special in baseball that no other sport has, but also there are some similarities in what makes this game great that are found in other sports. But sometimes it is hard to see because they are found in different places. Excitement. 
speed, action. That isn't everything. You can't have the sweet without the sour, the good without the bad, and the fast without the slow. I'm just asking, don't knock baseball without giving it a chance. And really, watching it on TV alone doesn't count either. To say that you know baseball only because you've watched it on TV would be like saying that you're a part of the New York Giants Super Bowl team because you watch the game. You need to be a part of baseball and be engaged in baseball. You need to the go I mean you need to go to the game more than once. If you don't like it, you've tried it. What more can I ask for? Now I told you guys this was gonna be more opinionated than normal, but I that stuff I wanted to get off of my chest and put my two cents here into the mix. I mean, if you agree with what I've said, go ahead and thumbs up this video. Share it with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. And comment on what you think. What makes baseball an amazing sport? What makes it different? And what things do you find in common with other sports? I mean, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say because you guys always have interesting points. And it is always awesome to be able to read, like I said, what you guys have to say. Now, before I kind of get off this video here and, and get off my soapbox here, uh, I wanted to remind you guys, too, that if you have questions about anything I said in this episode or anything related to baseball, you guys can go ahead and email me at letstalkbaseballquestions at gmail.com. I've got a couple great questions on there already. If I get enough on there, I might do a whole episode of your guys' questions. But again, thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for letting me kind of get this off of my chest. It was something that was kind of lingering there for some time. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. You guys, again, are awesome. Thank you, and I hope you have a good one.